Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurologist from Rajmandri, Andhra Pradesh, India. My email is 3klpm at gmail.com. I am also the medical author of the two books Focus Neurology and Exam Oriented Clinical Neurology. We are continuing with a series of lectures of Prime Neurology. There are going to be about 50 episodes of Prime Neurology and if one listens to all these 50 episodes of Prime Neurology, one would have acquired a good knowledge of Neurology. Right now we are on Prime Neurology Part 23. Prime Neurology Part 23, Epilepsy Part 3, Approach and Treatment. Approach to the patient, Clinical Evaluation. An in-depth history is essential because in many cases the diagnosis of a seizure is based solely on clinical grounds. The examination and laboratory studies are often normal. Differential diagnosis includes syncope or psychogenic seizures. Generalized examination includes search for infection, trauma, toxins, systemic illness, neurocutaneous abnormalities and vascular diseases. Asymmetries in neurologic examination such as brain tumor, stroke, trauma or other focal lesions. The differential diagnosis of seizures include syncope, psychogenic disorders, metabolic disorders, psychoactive drugs, migraine, transient ischemic attack, sleep disorders, movement disorders, special considerations in children like breath holding spells. The features that distinguish generalized tonic-clonic seizures from Simco. Features Immediate precipitating factors In seizures it is usually none. In syncope it is emotional stress, valsalva or orthostatic hypotension or cardiac etiologies. Premonitory symptoms in seizures, none or aura, example, odd order. Whereas in syncope, there could be tiredness, nausea, diaphoresis or tunneling of vision. The posture at onset. In seizure, it is variable, whereas in syncope, it is usually erect. The transition to unconsciousness. Seizure, it is often immediate, whereas syncope, it gradually occurs over seconds. The duration of unconsciousness, in seizures it is over minutes, whereas syncope it is just over seconds. The duration of tonic or clonic movements, 30 to 60 seconds in seizures and never more than 15 seconds in syncope. The facial appearance during the event, in seizure there could be cyanosis, frothing at mouth, whereas in syncope it is pallor, a very important differentiating point. The disorientation and sleepiness after event. Many minutes to hours in seizure, whereas less than 5 minutes in syncope. Aching of muscles after onset, often in seizure and sometimes in syncope. Biting of tongue, sometimes in seizure but very rarely in syncope. Incontinence, more common in seizures and less common in syncope. Headache, sometimes in seizure and rarely in syncope. The laboratory evaluation. Routine blood tests are indicated to identify the more common metabolic cause of seizures such as abnormalities in electrolytes, glucose, calcium or magnesium and hepatic or renal disease. A screen for toxins in the blood and urine should be obtained especially when no clear precipitating factor has been identified. A lumbar puncture is indicated if there is any suspicion of CNS infection such as meningitis or encephalitis and it is mandatory in immunosuppressed patients even in the absence of symptoms or signs suggesting infection. Testing for autoantibodies in the serum and CSF should be considered in patients presenting with an aggressive form of epilepsy associated with cognitive disturbances. Electroencephalography All patients should be evaluated as soon as possible with an EEG which measures electrical activity of the brain by recording from electrodes placed on the scalp. The presence of electrographic seizure activity during the clinically evident event 
that is abnormal repetitive rhythmic activity having an abrupt onset and termination clearly establishes the diagnosis the absence of electrographic seizure activity does not exclude a seizure disorder however the eeg is always abnormal during generalized tonic clonic seizures continuous monitoring for prolonged periods may be required to capture the eeg abnormalities the eeg can but does not always show abnormal discharges during the interictal period that supports the diagnosis of epilepsy and is useful for classifying seizure disorders selecting anti convulsant medications and determining prognosis brain imaging all patients with unexplained new onset seizure should have a brain imaging study mri or ct to search for an underlying structural abnormality the only exception may be children who have an unambiguous history and examination suggests suggestive of a benign generalized seizure disorder such as absence epilepsy newer mri methods have increased the sensitivity for determination for detection of abnormalities of cortical architecture including hippocampal atrophy associated with mesial temporal sclerosis as well as abnormalities of cortical neuronal migration treatment seizures and epilepsy acute management of seizures the patient should be placed in semi prone position with head to the side to avoid aspiration tongue blades or other objects should not be forced between the clenched teeth oxygen should be given via face mask reversible metabolic disorders like hypoglycemia hyponatremia hypocalcemia drug or alcohol withdrawal should be promptly corrected seizures and epilepsy the long term therapy includes treatment of underlying conditions avoidance of precipitating factors example sleep deprivation prophylactic therapy with anti epileptic medications or surgery and addressing various psychological and social issues choice of anti epileptic drug therapy depends on a variety of factors including seizure type dosing schedule and potential serious side effects therapeutic goal is complete cessation of seizures without side effect using a single drug monotherapy and as dosing schedule that is easy for the patient to follow so monotherapy is the dictum in epilepsy seizures and epilepsy if inactive if ineffective if ineffective medication should be increased to the maximum tolerated dose based primarily on the clinical response rather than the serum levels if still unsuccessful a second drug should be added and when control is obtained the first drug can be slowly tapered some patients will require polytherapy with two or more drugs although monotherapy should be the goal patients with certain epilepsy syndromes example temporal lobe epilepsy are often refractory to medical therapy and benefit from surgical excision of the seizure focus or various forms of neurostimulation selection of anti epileptic drugs so generalized onset tonic clonic seizure focal seizure typical absence atypical absence myoclonic and atonic there are first line drugs and the alternatives we'll check out on the first line drugs for generalized onset tonic clonic seizures it is lamotrigine and valproic acid for focal seizures it is lamotrigine carbamazepine oxcarbamazepine phenytoin and levetiracetam for typical absence it is valproic acid ethosuximide lamotrigine for atypical absence myoclonic and atonic it is valproic acid lamotrigine and topiramate so these are the wonderful concepts of the approach and treatment of epilepsy the other important concepts of clinical neurology i put it in a book called exam oriented clinical neurology written by me dr s srinivas published by white army this book will be very useful for students appearing for clinical neurology exams and if interested this book could be purchased the other book i wrote is focused neurology written by me dr s srinivas published by cbs publishers and distributors this book contains all the essential elements of theoretical knowledge theoretical neurology exam and this book will be very useful for students appearing for orals or viva oc this book is available online from all leading booksellers including amazon and therefore if interested this book could be purchased online
I hope you have enjoyed listening to these wonderful concepts of approach and treatment of epilepsy. As I said in the beginning of my lecture, there are going to be 50 episodes of Prime Neurology and if one listens to all these 50 episodes of Prime Neurology, one would have acquired a good knowledge of neurology. Just now we are done with another episode of Prime Neurology. If you have liked it, please like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts which is India's leading neurology educational YouTube channel and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.